Okay, welcome back. Here we're going to now test this tool to make sure it functions. The best way to do that is in a test project. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this for now. I still have my library open. It's right here. It's fine. I'm going to go start a new quick project, and I'm just going to call this test. It's always best to test your work before you go into any type of production environment. Okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick part. I'm just going to bang this out really fast just so we have something to turn. It's going to be super duper complex and I know that everyone watching is going to be super impressed. And there we go. That's going to be my part. I'm going to quickly just revolve this at a specific size. I'm going to say that's three inches. I'm going to say that's inch and three quarters. And because I like clean data, I'm going to say that's three and a half. And we'll call that one and a half. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and just simply revolve this. And that's going to be the widget that we're going to manufacture. We're going to go ahead and make a machine part setup for this really fast. In the machine part setup, of course, I'm going to describe the stock condition. It's going to be cylindrical. We're going to come in here and we're going to say that it's a piece of bar stock some distance long. And we're going to say this is a nice eighth inch. And we'll say that's an eighth inch as well. Uh, who cares? It's good enough. We have our part. Now, the reason I'm going through this step-by-step step is because as you're testing and building for the first time, you're going to run into maybe some potential problems during it. And I'm going to try to show you some problems that may happen. Next, I'm going to go ahead and go to machining. And here I am going to cheat to win time on my video, and I'm going to choose my Mori NT Machining Center, just because I have a bunch of stuff predefined on it already. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And boom, just like that. We're ready to rock. I'm going to go right here into there. We're going to flip that over. And then I'm going to just put that flat face to that flat face. And then I'm going to take my jaws, close it on there. Perfect. I know that part is sticking out a country mile, but that's OK. I don't care. So part's good. Now, all my holders already have tooling in them, OK? But I can say, you know what, I don't really care. And we could go ahead and uh, delete one of these tools and stick another one in, or we can just load another holder. In my references, I'm going to reference my holder library, which I just have to go up to here, Oop, pardon me, to here, and go to my holders. And this is showing you how to add references again. And then under my holders, I'm going to expand this, and I double clicked on it to open it, by the way, and I'm going to go find my simple single holder here. Let's find out. Do want that? No, we want single left. No, single right. Like that. And I'm going to drag and drop include that. And I'm going to put that on the turret. And on the turret, I'm going to say that's going to be in pocket number 12. And I'm going to green check mark. Fabulous. So now we have our holder there. Now we just need to stick our tool in. Now in order to find the tool from this project, we have to reference that project. So I'm going to minimize my holder library because I might come back to it. I'm going to go back to References, Reference Library, and I'm going to zoom on down here to my library and choose MS Tool Library. Perfect. With MS Tool Library reference now, I can go in and I can create a reference or add my tool, I should say. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come to my lower turret. Pocket 12 is what we added to, right? So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to make sure that I am pointing at the external turn library. I'm going to double click right there and it's going to start loading. Now, in my case, because I was playing around with this before making the video, it came straight to my library. But it is because I had picked this and chosen specifically my tool library. And now I see my tool, right? If I click OK, that tool is now going to be inside the holder just like it's supposed to be. It's perfectly positioned. Now, remember that offset? Notice how far this is sticking out? This is sticking out that same offset. Now, you could still come in here and screw with that offset distance. If I go to Tool Assembly, I can come here and say, you know what, let's shift that by an inch. Or I want it to go out further by an inch. Again, you can play with this all you want. You can also, just so you know, rotate these around because sometimes you want to put them in upside down. Who knows? Now, I'm going to green check mark there, green check mark there, and now we're going to try using that tool to machine with. So let's zoom up over here, and you know what? I'm just going to turn down the length of this really quick. We're going to select it, go to roughing, 
and now we're going to go ahead and choose that tool. Now, in this template, I think my default first tool comes from the upper turret, which is a B-axis in this case, and it's a neutral tool. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to turn off that tool. I'm going to switch to the sub-spindle, or pardon me, the lower turret. And I want to find that new tool, which is in pocket 12, which is right there. I'm going to select it. Now, if everything works right, we should see that tool get loaded up in our preview, and we should see toolpath here in a second. There's a slight delay because I'm switching from the upper channel to the lower channel, so it's telling Top Solid which are the driving axes right now, and it's updating everything. It's done. Here's our tool. If I look straight at it, you can see, boom, it's picking the toolpath for us. It made everything. If I go here, it's going to generate the toolpath, and here I'm just looking to see if it updates the stock cleanly, which of course it does. Let's stop this. Let's turn on our machine simulation, and let's hit play. So here, you can see the tool coming in, coming up, and doing what it needs to do. Perfect. And now you've defined and tested your own tool. Pretty awesome.